I love going on Twitch and just seeing that I've got all this Prime loot despite the fact that I don't have Amazon Prime or Twitch Prime. So maybe it'll be a good deal. I don't know, I don't really watch a lot of streams, unfortunately, so... Uh, hello everyone, my name is Vando, and today is the 12th of April, uh, 2021. Uh, it's getting cold! It's... oh, I hate it! It's getting, like, awkwardly cold all the time. There's, like, um, there's this one article of, like, polar winds coming up from the Antarctic. Uh, just, like, straight up the, uh, I guess the Antarctic Sea. I don't know what that is. Oh. But like straight in, uh, Tandy probably got hit hard, Melbourne probably hit hard, Sydney not too bad, but it's like, oh man, I feel the cold, I really feel the cold, so, uh, today I'm going to be playing Super Mario Galaxy, uh, you guys probably know this game, and in fact, I am actually just going to jump directly into it. I think that'll, ooh. <laughs> may have doubled the audio briefly, and this is probably going to be a fair bit loud, so I'm going to turn that down, we'll say about that much, yeah, we'll go, we'll go with seven and a half. Uh, so, uh, I realized, yeah, <laughs> I had, I played this uh, a couple of times before, uh, in May 2019, um, I must have had my dolphin bar for a while back then, but then I just kind of gave it a, a test at the end there. Um, I'm playing the US version on this one, uh, but we can erase the, uh, the zero save data and come up with something else. Uh, but no, yeah, Murray Galaxy is a game that I have played on the channel. I played this in a bit of an interesting way where, um, that was when I was watching, uh, the Attacking Toucans, um, uh, versus race of, uh, of that. And so I uh, thought that was around the time when I actually did like kind of join in on um, on YouTuber trends and that kind of stuff. So I thought the versus let's play would be quite interesting. Um, I'm just going to kind of have this on screen. Uh, you can kind of read it as it goes because they force you at least glance through it. Um, but yeah, so I never realized that like he started his videos by literally having a, uh, a Skrillex. Uh, like clip just just like the like that that kind of stuff um and i had just put that verbatim in my videos and then i laid out the screen a little bit just that i had my game there i had the time i had the number of stars i had and then i just had their game uh on the screen um just to kind of compare in that i think i beat the game in oh uh, was it nine i don't know no, it wouldn't have been nine. Oh, it couldn't have been nine. Sexy Mario Gals. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Um, dude, oh, I, I love how this game looks. The 60 FPS really helps. But just like things like, hey, this like reflection. Really basic. It's obviously coming in from one direction, but... This game looks great. And a bunch of toads just got killed really brutally. Um... But no, yeah, I, I had, yeah, I just kind of joined in on that, and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna try and play half an hour at a time, just join in as they do it every week, kind of do a catch up as they follow along, uh, and then I seem to finish it like way earlier than they did. Uh, and uh, I feel like originally I treated it as a bit of a competition, but I don't really, I don't really think it's uh, as useful to just be like we're comparing a race because it's like. Oh, I don't really... I don't know. We, we, we practice... Well, I, I don't know. I haven't practiced. Uh, thanks for the follow, Mateo. Uh, yeah, I haven't really, like, practiced necessarily running, and I don't think they have, and I think it just depends on who knows the game the best. Uh, drop in the follow and go off. Ah, oh, that's okay. Have a good one, my man. Um... <laughs> So, Bowser doesn't speak English in this game, unlike uh, Mario uh, Sunshine. Um, so, I've got a a, a, a a minor topic, but I'll get into that later. Um, and I've got a couple of minor topics, actually. I think we should probably probably start off with the uh, the more controversial of the ones, which is uh, Deathloop getting delayed again. Um, like. 
Oh, I absolutely hate the number of games that, like, have just continued, like, being announced and all that stuff, and then it's just like, they just get delayed time and time again. Like, I know Cyberpunk is the one that everyone's gonna, like, cite, um, and to some extent, yeah, like, not only did it get delayed, like, three or four times, but, like, it also didn't deliver, really, and, um, I was watching a friend play through it, and then I'm like, Hey, uh, you know how, like, when you kick someone out of a car, and then they start, like, running away at some point? What happens if you flick the camera back and forth, so, like, you, they're just off-screen for, like, a frame? And turns out, yeah, no, they disappear. And I feel like they didn't in the past, and this is just, like, this is a, a corner cut they have to do. They have to get the performance right, and this is the e one of the easier ones to do. Just, like, if someone's running away, they're gonna disappear at some point. So, let's get rid of them then. Um, and it's just like, man, I, like, I haven't played the game, but, like, I would be rather disappointed at all, like, the corner cuts they've done to try and pull the performance back up. And it's, it's such a problem because, uh, also that's fun, uh, dot transparency, where it's like, well, the easiest way to make transparency is, uh, just like the newspaper. If you put the dots far enough away... You can see through it without technically having anything see through. Except they do that anyways, like the flames here are obviously see through. So. I don't know what's with the movement on that UFO. But yeah, no, the point is, uh, I don't really know too much about Deathloop, to be honest. All I know is it's by Arcane. I've I have only played Dishonored 1 and Prey 2017. I wasn't the biggest fan of Dishonored. I it's it's a fine game. I don't think it's absolutely amazing. It doesn't, like... It, it's got the Thief influence, but I don't think it really, like, has what made Thief absolutely amazing. Um, and <laughs> for those who have known my Twitch channel, yeah, like me playing Thief on stream. Thief, I will remember it fondly. Uh, for all its frustrations. But, like, at its core, it is such a, such a brilliant game. Um, but... The other game I've played of theirs is Prey 2017, and Prey 2017 is remarkably, like, good. Like, it is one of my more favorite games of the, uh, the Xbox One whatever generation. It's so tight. It's so full of, like, polish and, and just great thoughtful things and, and really smart design on leading it uh, through all these, like, different, you know, kinds of play styles and that kind of stuff, which is exactly how System Shock 2 kind of felt to me. And so I'm, I'm glad, I'm really glad that they've, they've nailed something like that. Uh, I don't know a thing about Deathloop. You shoot people? That's my trouble, I, I don't, <laughs> I really don't know what games are supposed to be watching trailers and stuff. Um, so, yes. Uh, also, I am playing Super Mario Galaxy right now. Uh, for those who are very unaware, Super Mario Galaxy is a game that came out for the Wii very late 2007. Uh, that makes this game uh, about 13 and a half years old. It still looks reasonably good given native resolution, uh, but it is also on the Switch as part of the uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars package, the game that you now cannot purchase, unfortunately. Um, uh, it also does exist on the NVIDIA Switch. NVIDIA Switch? Why did I say that? Uh, the NVIDIA Shield. Sorry. But, uh, same thing for the most part. Um, I don't... I don't think I've seen any gameplay of that. But, that'd be good fun. Um, so, to start off the game, you had to just run straight to the castle. Nothing really too much happening. Uh, now that you're on this planet, you gotta deal around with... Planet. Like, what direction is what direction to push? Generally, the game does its best. It's pretty good at figuring out. Like, if I push up, yeah, that's that's pretty up. That's pretty up. Uh, left is pretty left at the moment. The camera does a good job at kind of knowing where you're going and, and giving you a good sight over everything, so I don't think there's an issue there. Uh, I am looking for the grass, which I'm probably, like, circling around the planet, yeah. So, uh, three rabbits. One is in the crater with the pipe. There's awkwardly three craters, two of which just connect to each other. Uh, there's the pipe and then there's the grass there, so you just gotta get them and then you can chase the rabbit. You could be the kind of guy who chucks your star bits at him, but I got skill. I don't need it. I'm good, so. Uh, and then you're gonna see me just kind of like walk and we'll talk to a person for a bit, so that's okay. Uh, yeah, I, no, I don't know a thing about Deathloop. 
really. Um, so hearing about it getting delayed is kind of like, well, I mean, did they announce it too early? And that's a general trend that I feel like the game's uh, suffering from, is that they're being... They're, well, not, not they're being announced too early necessarily, but it's like the, the people really want to know, like, oh, what, what's this next studio coming out with? And I'm not too sure if that's a financial incentive to, you know, have investors dump money into your company a little bit, or stocks, or whatever. Um, or you need the PR uh, to build interests. Um, I feel like games can probably work nicely with a two-month period of just, like, announcement, decent amount of dense trailer time, and then, like, release. I feel like that's what they need. You don't need to announce stuff, like, two years in advance. So they announced Deathloop, I believe, uh, E3 2019. Or was it... No, it might have been, like, a, the PlayStation Showcase. Um, something like that, but... Definitely a while back now. Um, and again, like, I don't really know much about the game. So I feel like the easiest thing to do is, yeah, game studios, I feel like, yeah, should... Announce a game when it's really well known how close it is to release. Uh, and then... Uh, spin, spin a lot. This game is just spin a lot again. Uh, and then yeah, just pack on the, the content. Because then I won't forget that your game was in development. I don't know how many games are just... They're in development and I've forgotten that they're in development. Uh, there's... I, I have to keep reminding myself about GTFO. I have to remind myself that there is indeed, um, like, Payday 3 coming along. Uh, Breath of the Wild 2 is one. You earned one additional Mario. Um, yeah, Breath of the Wild 2 is one where it's like, man, dude, you like, all we know is that there's a trailer. A bit, bit of a tough spot. I think Half Life Alex was a reasonably like smart announcement because people were not quite expecting um, like a Half Life game to come out. Uh, the trick with this planet is that there is a regular Goomba, and I don't know sure where he is. So I'm going to take out the Goombas until a regular Goomba decides to appear on me. Uh, so how do you play this game? A little bit. Uh, you can um, uh, unless you got to talk to this guy, and then the, the Goomba appears. Maybe that's it. Maybe that is it, actually. Uh, but yeah, no, you, you, it's regular standard platformer affair. You get the spin attack, which is very useful at uh, taking out enemies. But you also do have to run into them afterwards and just boot them over. This one Goomba does drop a key, which is great. I don't know how many people watching me have played Mario Galaxy, but... You know, sometimes it's everyone's first game. Or first time playing a game. He goes at uh, this guy, not as strong. He just he just boots you over a little bit. Um, this planet, all you gotta do is you gotta go to this big guy and the one to do that. He kicks over and drops yet another key. Uh, dropping the keys is something that I don't think happens very much in this game. Um, you're probably gonna see me kind of like side cut. Uh, I want to be on the record that Galaxy 2 is better. Oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> You'll hear me talk about this a little bit. I think Galaxy 2 has so much less downtime. It reuses a fair number of the mechanics. I still think there's that, but it. I'm glad that there's a full game worth of like material that they could still tap into, given Mario Galaxy. Um, like that's that's the amazing part about Mario Galaxy is that it was. I feel it was such a fresh idea that was really well put together, and then they just follow it up with a game. That's, it's more of the same, but it's more of the same. It's like, what, what worked really well? More of that, that's great. And I feel like developers shouldn't be afraid to make a sequel that is more of the same. Avoid this guy because he's, dang it. <laughs> I don't want him to just like tell me that I had to hit the switch. Uh, so one thing I always still love about this game is the visuals. It's, very distinct. It's got these like lovely, like not quite cell shaded, but just reflective, uh, like bright, uh, refracted kinds of just whatever. It's got all these wonderful effects. Um, uh, I am currently playing this on uh, the Dolphin emulator. Uh, I own a physical copy, of course, but I don't have my Wii U on the ready, unfortunately, so I cannot play it uh, on a physical copy. Of the uh, 
Um, but I am playing with a wear, uh, real wear mode, so there is that. Yeah, no, so you pick up the stars like any 3D Mario for the most part. Uh, I say any, but really there's only like five of them that do this. And this was the third one. So, your 3D All-Stars collection should you still be able to find a copy, which I 100% guarantee you'll be able to find copies. So, like, they're not going anywhere. It's like the, um, people forget that there was a Mario All-Stars on the Wii. Um, that was effectively just like a re-bundling of the SNES version. I guess the Switch one is a bit of a more unique package, yeah. but uh, well, not necessarily the uh, definitive editions of these games. Like uh, Mario Galaxy, of course, was on the Shield, so it's kind of got that already happening with it. And it's still got some quirks with the controls, like how uh, all the menus in this game you have to point to, um, to like, pick an option. It's okay for the wear mode, it doesn't really make much like much sense when you're playing the Switch in handheld mode. Uh, and you still have to like pretend like you're pointing at the screen with the Joy-Con. I find that it's a bit weird. Like, uh, considering that Sunshine, they had to do something about the control. And in theory, I guess like if you're doing, um, you know, the gyro kind of style instead of the wear, you know, an actual infrared pointer. Um, you know, they're obviously implementing something to, like, work the controls. I don't know why the menu was the one off-limit thing. Uh, if you're playing handheld, you gotta touch the screen. I don't know why why that's a requirement. It's it's minor, but it's just, like, eh, it doesn't necessarily make it, like, the better version. I think uh, both uh, Sunshine and Galaxy, they also only run the game at 1080p. There's no increased... Uh, assets like 64 has. Um, I think the 64 port, uh, if you don't care about glitches, is probably the definitive uh, edition. Still no widescreen, which is kind of weird. And it's 720p. It's a bizarre, like, middle ground. I don't know what's quite going on there. Um, but effectively, I just hit A through a lot of exposition that basically said that Rosalina is the person who comes by every hundred years, and she basically was like, well, someone stole all my power stars, so I was stuck here for a bit. Whoops. And the Lumas were gonna die, but then you picked up one star, and that one star seems to be good enough. But we want a little more, so we want you to pick up another 119 stars. Um, uh, and maybe you can find Peach on the way. Uh, those who played the game will reminisce, because the Good Egg Galaxy has such a vibe in music. Um, uh, very um, distinctly different. Like, this game's got... Uh, a much heavier orchestral feel to the music. Mario 64 still has that that uh, chip tune, um, whatever. Uh, uh, it actually, 64 is pretty pretty varied, I'd say. But um, uh, it's it's got this kind of like big band uh, feel to the the overworld levels and a string feel, uh, very kind of warm um, feel to the, the water levels, which I love. Um, so it does, it, it kind of has that, but because it's on the N64, you unfortunately have to present it in one way. Uh, do people know that you can jump straight into that without having to jump that move on? Great fun. I love it. There's, there's a surprising amount of side cuts. I don't know when people say, uh, cough, cough, uh, Mr. Uh, FD. I don't know you are. Um, uh, when you say this game is linear, and it's like, bro, do you know how many, like, wonderful, like, sequence breaks you can do in this game? You don't have to be the best platformer, you can just go to town. I'm gonna kind of, uh, off to the side in some places, because I do need to collect a lot of star bits. You need a lot in order to collect all the stars in this game. Oh, apparently I was spinning, but not good enough, unfortunately. Um, what a shame. Uh, I love the, uh, the jacketed weirdo, by the way. It's a sight you don't see too much. Uh, there's that jump as well. Uh, punch that butt. Look at that. Oh, goodness. Uh, but this game is, like, it's reasonably awesome. You're gonna see more of it. I just have to have a, have a fun time. I'm not too sure what's with the, the point of it. You can see it jumping. It's 
Professor Quirks here and there. Uh, so, extra life, every 50 star bits, and also every 50 points if you're one of those people who somehow have points in this game. Um, you don't really need points. They're only there to really uh, have a high score at the end and heal. So, the star bits is what you want to collect. They're, they're a little bit of a currency. We'll see more about them later in the game. Uh, but for now, we have a boss, and this boss, you have to hit four times. The first hit is free though, so maybe it does count as three hits. Uh, the emulator does display that a little differently, so there's no way to play that. Uh, that's why I was there for that they can't resolve. Because the effect is so brief, it only happens about like ten times in the game. So, you know, for, for how this game seems to look when it's emulated, having that ten times, like... It's, it's a very acceptable amount considering how, how well it runs as well. A dolphin is a miracle emulator. Should not be working as well as it does. But here it is. I get to be using a real Wii remote and playing a game at like full speed with everything else looking reasonably fine and the controller can look but it's like. Yeah. Is that the newish? Does the job. Does the job real well. So, that's good. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, so as I said, there's 120 stars in the game. Uh, I'm two in. We'll see how we go. Uh, the stars definitely take their time. I can beat Mario 64 in like half an hour. Uh, that's... Uh, that's not picking up most of the stars, but that's picking up at least 16 of them. So, there is that. Uh, so, now you're getting a little tutorial with the star bits. Uh, basically, how you do it is you point at the screen and you can pick them up, and then you can point at the luma and you can hit B. Uh, oh. Yeah, my point is gonna have a fun time. I'm not really too sure what's with it, so just ignore any time I'm pointing at the screen and it's going beep, 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 cause I don't know. Could it be the sensitivity? Maybe. But you gotta go back into Good Egg again. Because you need three stars in order to get to the next level, and uh well I got this level is called a Snack of Cosmic Proportions. You're gonna see me do like one skip. I don't think there's really that many on this level, but there's definitely one that I know of. So that's a good one. Uh, this is a rather interesting level, uh, just because it really wants to show you this mechanic. Uh, so, one thing that I always find fun uh, if you ever see anything octagonal in this game, give it a spin. Get the eight stars. It's great. Uh, the short-term goal of this level is to pick up 100 star bits. Uh, thanks for the follow, JZZ. Unless that's uh, JZZ missing one letter. I don't know. Hello there. How you doing? If you're missing the A, and it's Jazz 132. So, full stars, you just point, and you can kind of eat into that. And you're like jazz, oh, exactly. Ah! <laughs> you know what, exactly. Uh, so we got these spiky boys. You don't want to touch the spiky boys. And unlike uh, the other two Mario 3D platforms that came beforehand, you don't have too much health. You've only got three hits. It's always three hits. Musicians. Uh, do you play any instruments, or are you... Uh, a listener or a, an analyzer. So if you if you study, I guess a, a student, a student of musician. Uh, there we go. Just got. Uh, so yeah, goal is to get a hundred star bits. I would like to try and collect as many as I can. Uh, and that's a, this is a fun, like, I guess, idea, is that you do need to collect all these star bits. You gotta get so many in order to get, like, uh, trumpet guitar piano, you literally can't get drums. Oh, dude. That's... I love, like, multi-instruments. 
I I would love to like be able to do guitar really. I can mildly do piano, but like I wouldn't I would not perform piano. I like all I know is that I can play a key, I can make uh like I can try and record with playing a snippet and do how do you do it? How do you play all these instruments? I guess guitar and bass are be so well. Um, I'm going for the rocks. If you can spin the, the red part, then you can get some goods. I will demonstrate that. Yeah, I'm not going to demonstrate it anymore. If you die, you lose all your coins, but not your starbits, so it's, I guess it's not the worst to grind, but... I'm not, I'm not that good. Dude, yeah, no, nah, I... Like, I actually, I really admire, like, all the instrumentalists. Um, and, uh, especially trumpet. Like, brass instruments. I remember, like, my primary school, like, they really wanted to, like, go, Okay, guys, who, who here is going to be a trumpet player? Uh, you're 11. Oh, sick. Dude, okay. Even better. If you're young, so much time to, like, become an absolute pro. It's great. Uh, yeah, no, they, like, in my primary school, they were just like, yeah, like, we wanted to be a, a trumpet player, and they got, like, a bunch of people to, like, blow into a trumpet piece, and then, uh, or, or a mouthpiece, and then, um, go, like, yeah, no, like, you're just not doing it right. And they basically found, like, the practice of so like, like, yeah, like, and next to oh. <laughs> You get to do the, um, the, the Mexican, uh, I was thinking that, that's not Mexican, is it? That's just the, that's just a beautiful one. Like the Matador horn, how about that? Is that, is that Mexican? <laughs> Flamenco is not Mexican, that's Spain, is it? Still, I, I legit, legit, I admire like being, being able to like play all these instruments at like, at especially a young age. Like, you don't have to be an expert, but if you know how to make something that sounds okay, that's great. I was a violinist in uh, primary school, and violin, as uh, my music teacher will refer to it, uh, one of them, uh, they'd refer to them as the scratch boxes, because uh, everyone at, basically until you're like 14, everyone would just go, it's just the most horrendous sound, no one knows how much pressure actually needs to be on the string, it's just like, you just scratch it. Uh, if you have enough, like, you know, young people playing the violin, you can tell what they're trying to go for. Uh, but he was just like, nah, the violas is where it's at. The violas know what's going on, and then the violas are just like, oh, we're in the same boat. We don't even know how to read alto clef, man. Like, what's going on? What is an alto clef? Uh, uh, see ya, the man jazz. Have a good one. Have a good night, Ores. Um, oh my gosh, I'm horrendous here. I was gonna say you can you can do these wonderful like backflips just up the up the wall. You don't have to do like a lot of the platforms in this game. You can definitely go jump around. Uh, you saw the hungry Luma earlier. Uh, basically, yeah, that was what the hundred sabots were for. Uh, this is the one level where that is a required function, uh, and so you you would have seen the uh, extra launch star that would have sent you around back to the other planets before the sabots respawned. Um, it's not the fastest way to grind star bits. I think the easiest way is to find a place where you can pick up at least 50 to just get free lives, and then, uh, just keep trying yourself get that. Uh, this area has much more meat to it, uh, than what I am giving it credit for. <laughs> uh, and also, this last part, you have to collect these five little star chips to make uh, the pool stars active, but uh, little do the level designers know that that is definitely reachable. Or maybe they did know the whole time. So, uh, but no, yeah, like, playing, a, playing an instrument is a real, like, it's an interesting discipline because, like, sometimes you don't care too much about really being amazing. There's always, and I did always feel overshadowed, there were like a, a handful of kids who were just like, I want to be the best at this instrument because uh, someone is going to call upon me instead of you to be an instrument. Maybe, maybe it was just a competitive school. Um, but they definitely like, that was something that a few students had. And I was just like, you know, I feel fine like being like a second violinist, like kind of leader of the section. And just kind of being like, you know, I may not necessarily be like the best 
performer, but it's like, hey, you know, I, I want to feel confident in what I play. Uh, King Caliente's Battle Fleet. Uh, so for note, by the way, every uh, main galaxy in this game has three main stars. You will see me try and pick up those three main stars as soon as I can. Uh, there exists one secret star in every single one of these three star galaxies as well. And there exists uh, a comet star, which will get into later, the game will lean into that, and a, uh, a purple comet star, and uh, the, I hate the way that the purple comets are locked behind beating Bowser uh, at some point. So you're going to see me just beat Bowser at some point, and then I'm going to see this. Oh, so the trick with this is to do that. That way then you don't have to go through that orange pipe, which was the intended way to get onto the roof. Uh, unfortunately for this galaxy, this is uh, one of few where uh, you can't get the um, uh, the hidden star right away. We do have to wait for that. I love these Pokemon. I love these like Pokemon. It's just like what is this? It's great. There's so much like fun stuff here. Like I'll even show this off because this does result in a lot of a lot of star bits if you actually do it. So you see these chain chomps, you can't do anything but the chain chomps, unlike the boulders. But then you go into this room and you've got these uh, couple of boombas. Uh, this is a absolutely fun angle. Uh, and then down here is the Rainbow Mario. Not, not quite the uh, star, but Rainbow Mario. I remember there being more boombas down there. I love how it gives you that opportunity to get quite a number of stars that you probably wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Uh, so this is a nice round planet. Uh, and uh, I remember this was like one that they showed off at E3. The planet order in the Good Egg Galaxy was... Actually, maybe it wasn't that different. Maybe you did just play exactly this, this star. I remember that. Um, I have very fond memories of, like, watching, um, uh, Jeff Gersman play this game, uh, the Giant Bomb like, way back. Like, I remember the game started and then, like, the Giant Bomb, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll tune into this side. And they played this game for three hours, just, like, just straight. Alright, you ready? Boom! Boom! Too good. Uh, and that really, like, piqued my interest. And then they were like, we only hit, like, the second dome. Like, near the end of the second dome, so they did manage to do a Bowser fight. But, like, that was... You know, that was that. And, and this was just, like, a first impression, like, kind of video. And I was like, dude, like, that's some great stuff. And that that was one one piece of material that did inspire me to start, like, playing games. Was watching them play uh, Mario Galaxy and just absolutely, like showcase it to its best capabilities. But, uh, here is another boss. This is the second boss that we've seen in uh, 34 minutes of gameplay. Yes, it is. Uh, this game does a great job of not repeating bosses as well, for the most part. King Caliente here. We just gotta hit him in the face with the coconut that he spits every so often. He usually spits fireballs. You don't want those. You don't want the fire potatoes. You want the but then he's gonna play tennis with you. But he's not very good. Then he drops his crown. And now he's angry! And that, the effect would have been there again. But, uh, he makes these blue things appear. You can just... Take the hit. Yeah, whoops. Whoops. Okay, uh, this game's got a reasonably forgiving amount of health, but I think it's a fair amount. Three hits seems pretty fair. Um, The lava can look a little cheap if you're looking at it from the wrong place, but, uh, yeah, from this angle? Yeah, okay. Sure. I'll take it. <laughs> Wahoo! I got the star! I should stop never do that again. <laughs> so, uh, I'll be trying to go for 120 stars in this game, but that'll be over the course of, uh, two-hour sessions, like I usually do. So, that'd be good fun. Um, but no, yeah, I was inspired by playing this game just because, uh, yeah, no, I'd seen, like, a, a person 
um, make the, the very bold claim that Mario Sunshine is a better game than Mario 64 now. There's wrong opinions on the internet, but like, you know, you guys gotta, you gotta cool, you gotta, how can you say that Sunshine is better? Like, the blue coins, I mean, really? <laughs> I find Sunshine's an interesting one because that's the one that I don't have any nostalgia for. Oh, who would ever make that? Exactly, exactly. Um, it's it is the one that I don't have any nostalgia for because I never played it as a kid. Uh, that being said, I can 100% see why it, like why people do see it better than 64. 64 is rather clunky in various parts. I credit Mario 64 in a lot of ways because it is like, you know, it, it nails that, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, way of uh, design that, uh, being able to pick whatever you want, uh, being able to definitely get the B costume and not just walk past getting it. Do people, do people go for the B costume usually? I want the life though. Okay. Uh, you fall down here, uh, pick up a few thingies, uh, then you get told that the B costume is actually unlockable here, but, uh, little do they know that I have the power of jumping, except, uh, yeah, you don't even need the B costume here, actually. Except I am gonna 100% get caught out by this time. Yeah, you're supposed to get the B costume twice by now. Um, don't need it. Don't need it. It's uh no actually yeah. Now you need it. You need it over here. But they conveniently put it like right next to where you're going anyway. The objective is so high up, so you do need the B costume now. So the B costume is one of uh various power-ups in this game, and I love the way that the power-ups work. It's something that I thought was like surprisingly missing from Sunshine. I was like, yeah, there's no power-ups. You got the Yoshi, but that's it. Parrots make this so much better. Parrots are what makes Mario Mario. Yeah. Like, just kind of gimmicky mechanics that work really nicely. <laughs> Don't want to lose gravity though, that's the one thing. Because you kind of orbit like down south. It's a really weird look, but it does the job. Uh, so anyway, move over Rosalina, because we got the best character in all of Mario history. Uh, the, uh, the Queen Bee. A physician, we assume. Like, you know you can't sleep when it's 6am and you're randomly watching Mario Galaxy stream. <laughs> hey, it's not random, it's fate, okay? <laughs> Life finds a way. Uh, and now, now you're gonna watch the, uh, the most sensual part of this. I love, like... Like, once you're looking at this through an emulator, you're looking at this, like, without, uh, like, CRT distortion and anything, like, this effect of the, of the fuzz is rather obvious, but it's still neat. Like, it's a cool effect for what they're actually using it for. This is like a radial blur effect you'd use on, like, um... I, uh, or maybe I'm just rubbing words in your face and just mean me nothing. Like, this is 100% like a blur effect. Um... Uh... Uh, you'd be surprised. This is an emulator running at native res. Uh, the stream is 1080p. So that's why you kind of see, like, a little bit of, um... Uh, a little bit of, a. Uh, I guess, like, hard aliasing on some of the, the things because it is... Um... I think the Wii was doing anti-aliasing, like, internally, but, uh, yeah, because this is effectively, um, the 480p just, you know, being, being rendered directly, so it's really clear to, to capture. Uh, but, yeah, the, if you're gonna use an emulator, why not scale to 4K? I love the native res, though. I, I'm a big sucker for native res, so every time I emulate a game, it, I always just play it native res. Because otherwise, also, like, sometimes you get, like, some weird tearing in textures, and... I don't really want to bet whether, ah. whether Mario's uh, Galaxy is a game that does handle it fine. Um, it probably is. Um, look. But I, I, I don't know, I just love the native look of things. Just because, like, yeah, this is an old game. Yeah, I'm not really supposed to be able to see over there. Also, yeah, if you upscale things, usually you, stop, you start spotting the LOD swapping, which I know this game does, but it does a very good job of hiding it. Uh, yeah. The easiest one you can see is uh, these lights down here. Uh, um, don't. <laughs> they don't appear all the way. 
Uh, they make mods, uh, maybe internet speed, um, I mean, I'm streaming at 1080p, uh, 1080 60, so, I'd be streaming at 1080 60, make most. Um, uh, they do make mods for that stuff, I do, I do agree. Um, on this channel, I play quite a lot of games, um, so I, I generally just like playing, at, like, as native as possible, even if it is an emulator for convenience, I do like playing, um, just as kind of close as I can to what it originally was. Um, that being said, of course, the emulator does have its quirks. The um, whenever a boss like roars in this emulator, it doesn't quite look 100% uh, correct. Um, but I'd say like you know how how often does that happen? Not the most. So, okay. uh, so your goal is to hit that one specific thing. Uh, stop shaking for a moment because you need to grab the second one, and you don't want to. Um, you don't want to shake and spin and suddenly lose your momentum above the other thing lower above the hole. Um, this level's pretty alright, I actually. I, I do like Honey High Galaxy. Uh, and uh, now this is a, uh, a fun conversation I have with Mr. Uh, Mr. FD, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, so Mr. FD believes that Mario Galaxy 1 is a better game than Mario Galaxy 2. Uh, and I mentioned earlier that Galaxy 2 is full of ideas. Uh, that is not to say that Galaxy 1 is a bad game. I love this game. In fact, they're, they're almost like... It's basically... Uh, what's like a perfect analogy? Uh, it's like Wish You Were Here to Darkseid. It's like Darkseid did a lot of things that made it. Wish You Were Here, you may perceive as the better album. Because you may like what it does more. 100% it wouldn't exist without Darkseid. And you'd have to acknowledge that, but... Uh, 3D All Stars is my favorite version since one, my PC is crap, two, I love using the Pro Controller, three, they remaster my favorite game of all time. Uh, I was gonna say as well, um, if you like, uh, I, I'm curious how the, uh, the Shield version of this runs, because it's, I think it is the exact same effective port. It runs, like, just as, just as well, it's in 1080p, uh, the controller you're using, I think you can actually hook up an Xbox controller to the Shield, so maybe if you want to play with that. Uh, I don't know how on earth you do the pointing so... I winked up. Oh my goodness, imagine if that was a human being and like all those limbs just went right up. Why am I thinking this? Um, seriously, Mara is brutal in, in ways you don't understand. <laughs> uh, ding, 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 ding. I, I feel like you could fall onto the... onto the boss. But I just didn't. Uh, oh, I gotta stop them. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> uh, the game is worth uh, the whole 60 bucks. It's legit the best uh, three games of all time in HD. I don't think Sunshine is quite the best game of all time. Uh, but I 100% I agree that, like, you know, the value of the $60 is kind of there. Like, the these games hold their worth really well. And that's something that, like... Uh, People, people hate to hear when they're like, oh, games go really cheap. And I'm a guy who's like, yeah, I buy a ton of games. I love how this is technically a boss. Oh, here's a fun thing. Uh, spinning just before you uh, ground pound actually does a mild block up. That's a feature they never tell you about in the game, but it saves your hide so much. Sunshine isn't as bad as people say. It's just definitely the hardest Mario ever. Uh, I don't even think it's like that amazingly hard. It's got some like remarkably cheap stars. Not all of them, and definitely not the ones that you have to have to do to beat the game but a handful of them the pachinko one the lily pad star um uh things that slightly involve the camera the watermelon just it's a little a little inconsistent and it's just like it's a bunch of bunch of tickling like things you know you know you, you play it and like I, i've played this right now and it's like it's been a real smooth experience six stars i know but, Mario 64 is worse than Sunshine in my opinion, the controls of 64 are yikes, to some extent. I, I do agree, like, the jumps in 64 are like, hold your breath, are you going to jump over those gaps? Um, I, I'm probably uh, a little biased because I have played that game for, uh, I think the first time I played it was in 2005, um, so that would have been yeah, 16 years back. Um, yes. I love the... Uh, the faster music in this song, by the way. Ah, the old man of Buck Planet is Fetzal Kingdom. I've killed like one. 
But I love this like mod storytelling that jumps into the stars as well. And that's something I've, I've missed. Yep, okay, good. That's something I have 100% missed with, uh, it's the best game I've made in the reviews for it show. I, like, it's not, I, I don't think it's like the best game in my opinion, but it's 100% like, I would say top 5, or top 10. It's so up there. Um, I'd say my personal favorite of all time is Metro Prime. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, I would, I would 100% like, I would not complain if like, I don't know, Galaxy was the best. Because it's so tight, it's so full of ideas. And, and I'm so amazed that Nintendo can keep this up, you know, with a, with a Galaxy 2. You can take the same concepts and make just like, you know, just as much a sequel of the game. It's great. Um, I think 3D World is a really good game. People sleep on it. The only guy I would say that's the Galaxy of Amazing Skylar 3. That's the best part, they both came out the same year. 2007 was full of a lot of, like, tons of amazing games. I think, didn't they have an Uncharted that people actually loved? Um, this, this guy has a mild pain if he turns while you're about to get him. Or you just suck. Uh, he comes back. He comes back. <laughs> But then he does this, now he's angry! Again. Dropped a lot of starters, so I'll tell you that. Uh, and also, yeah, boss number, like, does this count as four, technically? Oh, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad. Uh, I have not played Halo 3, I've only played Halo, uh, 1. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the library level, but, you know. I've never played Metro Prime, so let's hope Prime Shore will be for the anniversary this year. Um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I would love for them to, to port it, um, considering that, uh, both Galaxy and Prime Trilogy did get ported to the Wii U, uh, and granted, I know they run it in the Wii mode, and I know that all that, but then also considering that Galaxy ran pretty fine, I'd imagine Prime would also run it. reasonably alright. Now, Prime is a little iffy in, in Dolphin. Actually, not the, well. Prime Three in particular. It's not the most perfect emulatable game, which is a little, little bit of an issue. So I think Nintendo might have a similar thing where um, just the performance of the game, because it's such a demanding game on the Wii, even and the GameCube. They're both just well, they're all three of them. Just like, ooh. Uh, do I have enough? I think this is 400, isn't this? Yeah, it's 400. Uh, so let's see whether the cursor just, like, possibly cuts out. Yeah, you'll see it just turns to a star all of a Uh, just expect, uh, for it to be exactly like 3D All-Stars and upscale to 10 You know what, I don't even mind if all the games just are straight, like, just render upscale. That's it. Or, 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 not an upscale necessarily, but like, just a high render resolution. Render at 1080 and play the game normally. Uh, you know, okay, one thing, and I mentioned this, to my friends, and I really, really want this. Uh, the right Joy-Con has uh, an infrared um, receiver on the bottom, and I would love if there's some way that they can take that infrared signal or, or add an infrared transceiver onto like the front of a, a Joy-Con and be able to then point at an optional uh, IR receiver to then recreate th that infrared, uh, you know, you know, ability that I'm doing right now, where you can point straight at the screen. Um, uh, for reference as well, by people who don't know uh, the structure of the game, uh, there also exists a lot of one-star galaxies that just exist. You just get one star, but there's, uh, there's fun little ideas. This one, it's a bunch of platforming. Um, this reminds me of the floodless levels, just themed a little differently. Uh, this is a fun platform because it's spinning around some point, and it's very disorienting because the corridor leans slightly. Is it spinning or is it actually like feeding in? I think it is actually feeding down. It's a, it's a looping platform, but uh, the effects are done really nice. I actually, I believe these are like, I don't know if they're not. Why are they not using the right Joy-Con sticks? I'm going to use since the only Joy-Con on the way. There is that as well. Uh, Metroid, um, actually I... I, th I think for Metroid, um, Metroid Prime 3 is an interesting one because it is heavily designed around the fact that you're pointing at the screen because there's enemies that where it's like you're locked onto them 
and you need to, like, aim off them to, like, reasonably, like, on point, um... Nice, thanks, guys. <laughs> Uh, like, that, that, there's mechanics like that. If you play on Prime Trilogy, you'll then also notice that the uh, reverse is kind of iffy, where Prime 1 and 2, because locking on aims directly forward, uh, moving your Wii Remote anywhere to the side makes no sense. It's, it's a very bizarre decision why they even let you do that. I understand for turning, but uh, uh, I think... Yeah, I, oh, I mentioned that earlier, and it's like 100%. I, I hate the idea that the... Like, you still have to point for the menus, or tap the screen. No, no button controls, and I'm not too sure why, and I don't know how, um, the shield version works for that. But, uh, no, yeah, there's, yeah, no, I, I'd be interested in Prime Trilogy coming back to, to the Switch, um, but yeah, the, uh, the difference in controls just for Prime 3. I think Prime 1 and 2, you can just go straight, because they don't rely on the analog controls in any way, of the, the analog triggers on like Galaxy, sorry, on like Sunshine, so they don't have to worry about that. And uh, yeah, the rest of the layout is reasonably on point. In fact, I think it would be great because you have the, um, the, the awkward thing is, I don't know if Twin Stick is necessarily how you want to play uh, Metroid Prime, as much as it's like, it's a little weird because it's look turn, like controls. Um, with, uh, with the right stick, you don't have to tap the screen with the flex. Oh, exactly, yeah. Um, this is a much shorter idea level. Uh, this, like, what you saw was what you get. That's kind of it. Oh, did I really? I'm just gonna ride it. Ooh, had a bit of momentum there. Had a bit of momentum there. I'll kill you last time. Not gonna die today. Nope, no siree. Woo! I'm terrible at this game. Oh no. Uh, when I had Mario 64 on my Wii console from the Wii shop, I used GameCube control and I had no idea what a GameCube was. I, it's, it's interesting, I... I wonder how many people who played these games, um, myself included, uh, on the Wii Virtual Console with a, a GameCube controller, because the Wii Classic controller, until the, uh, the GoldenEye version with the wings, was an absolute, like, filth controller in my opinion. I did not like the Classic controller. The way that the fact that, like, the Z buttons are just in, like, closer towards the center and not behind, uh, no wings, um, the cable coming out of the bottom was a new one for me as well, um, at the time, because I'd only used PlayStation controllers and, uh, the GameCube and the Xbox, and that seems, I think the Dreamcast is from the bottom, so I've never used the Dreamcast. I think the, this the, the, I think the SNES maybe, well, I can't remember. But, oh well, um. But yeah, no, I, I like I remember playing uh, Ocarina of Time for the first time on the Virtual Console, and it's just like it's a little bizarre, like not having the C buttons, especially for that stuff. So, uh, this year is the year of anniversary collections and remasters. We have Pokemon, Zelda, Metroid, and Donkey Kong this year. Um, yeah, there's Pokemon this year, Zelda, um, Scarlet Sword's coming on, uh, Metroid uh, is maybe coming. I, I'm gonna ask this Metroid, uh, Donkey Kong, which? Which Donkey Kong is coming? I haven't checked. Uh, Gen 4 Remake Poggers. Uh, definitely, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, it's interesting because I'm, like, I don't want to sound like, oh, I'm, I'm a spoiled Pokemon fan with a Pokemon picture <laughs> on the screen literally the whole time. But, like, I really love Heart Gold. I think Heart Gold is the best package of a Pokemon game they've ever done. I love what they've done with uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Um, I, and I think like Leaf Green and Fire Red is like, hey, that's a great way to like, you know, expand upon um, the uh, the original game as well, because the original game's got a lot of problems. Uh, the Chibi Asar Gen 4, uh, I mean, legit Pokemon fans can play that. 
Like, I, it, it doesn't look like it's going to be a bad game. I, if anything, I appreciate that it's going to be faithful. And I would prefer it be faithful than for it to, like, really cheese out. Um, there's a fun side galaxy where you do a Manta Ray minigame that only appears in this on one other level. I am reminded that Mario Odyssey had a, uh, a rolling, like, race where you play as a round otter and uh, you roll and you just do it in that one level. I really gotta go back and play Odyssey. Like, legit, you do so many things in that, you're like, oh yeah, cool. I think it's because these older games are a little uh, more approachable to pick up. As they start getting longer, they stop being as uh, as interesting to pick up and play because they may outlive the, the um, you know, their fun time. I, I think Breath of the Wild is just not going to say so. I'm going to go to the but I don't think. <laughs> it's not that bad, it's just man, it's a long game. I am playing Deus Ex in the which is long ish, it's not too long. Uh, people were wanting Sword of Shield style, uh, when before they were complaining that Sword of Shield of crap. Uh, one, zero, one, one, zero. Is that 22 in binary? Nice. Uh, yeah, no, I 100% I agree that, like, a, a lot of Pokemon fans, uh, and to some extent rightly so, were upset about how Sword and Shield ended up being. I'm not too upset about Sword and Shield, I think it's a, it's a fair game. It's just that, like, it, it drops the ball when it comes to, like, that kind of, like, um, thoughtful playability that some of the other Pokemons have. I think X and Y really peaked that, and then, like, Sun and Moon's alright. I don't think Sword and Shield is necessarily like that bad though. The performance is an issue. The performance is definitely one thing. Uh, it's the least favorite. I easily have the most hours in it. I think I probably had the most hours in it. Hot gold. I was probably in the game like way back. Then. Or or um uh blue when I first played it before Gen Two was out. Uh, but I didn't really know English really, so. <laughs> So it probably took me longer than the uh, probably really liked. Listen, as a kid, I, even I could realize that Charizard was always critical with Slash. Something was up. Uh, so uh, once you've got enough uh, enough stars, uh, once, before you break the glass, I have a trick I'll, I'll show you. Okay, sure. Tell me the trick. Are you able to like spin into that without having a? Break it, or is it like jamming yourself in? Is that what you're going to hit it? Is the trick the time spent typing out the trick? <laughs> um, but no, yeah, I, I, I do like. Um, I think Pokemon is a fine franchise. It's definitely like the same. Go, go back and trip jump onto the glass with the one up, but land in the middle and the third jump on the third jump and spin. Alright, so one, two. Okay, so so land the door before that guy hits it. Alright, so land the third jump. One, two, oh gosh. I'm putting myself in the frame of mind. One, two, go. One. One, two. Oh my gosh, I'm terrible. I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, I could have done with the glass of points. One, two. Uh. Oh, are you able to like be so high up that you get sucked into something else? Is that the the, the shortcut? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, I see what you mean. Uh, I'll try the one with the coins. Maybe that's what. Um, okay. I didn't actually realize that that's a uh, that's a uh, jump there. Hold on. Hold on. Let me try to do that. One, two, three. Yeah, the one with the coins is probably a lot easier. Wow. 
Wow, dude, that's actually pretty neat. That's really neat. <laughs> it still play the cutscene when you land? Yeah, I, I'd imagine. Oh, it doesn't! It doesn't play the cut- Oh, snap, wait. Uh, this is just a piece of metal. This is just a piece of metal. <laughs> am I- <laughs> Am I showing off this boss in the worst way possible? Because when I come up here, is he gonna start shooting things? No, dang it. Alright, so if I stand in the middle. Uh, like here, right? If you specifically land in a spot where, like, he's not looking. Yeah, yeah, that's where I was. That's an interesting skip. That's that's really interesting. That, like, the gravity is that strong as well. Like, legit, I was falling for, like, 20 seconds. I appreciate reusing Bowser Jr. as well. I think some people may not like Bowser Jr. because they have very bad memories of Mario Sunshine. Uh, but I think Bowser Jr. is cool. Uh, so for those who don't know, it's just supposed to, like, use a bullet bill to, um, uh, break a little bit. <laughs> uh, so you're supposed to just break a little bit of glass and then you launch start to this planet, which then lands exactly which, where it triggers the boss. It's just like, yeah, I didn't, didn't exactly land there. You can see this guy a mile away, though, that's the thing, but... Um, and then, uh, yeah, you basically just climb up him. Uh, thanks for the follow, by the way. Um, and then you break this glass, but he's got a defense mechanism, which involves more, more walls. Uh, so if I'm a pro gamer, I may be able to get one of these guys, uh, and trigger him to go up and over, and then hit the thing without having to break any. Uh, close enough. But, <laughs> for the most part, yeah, you can get the bullet and just, like, completely go over the wall. Don't even have to, like, try and, like, break your way in. Um, and that's, uh, the first, like, major boss. So, you get a grand star for that, and the grand stars are just your, your key to unlocking the next dome, which unlocks its own set of levels. Um, rinse and repeat for six domes, and that's your game. But, it's a really good game, because, as we do more domes, We'll see more fun things. So, uh, and I'm only in an hour three in. So, uh, when I said four hours earlier, I think I was really off. So, it must have been 19 hours. Oh, nine, sorry, 19 parts. Which probably would have been nine and a half hours. I think I overshot the end. I was basically like, oh, I'm on the last level. I might as well just shoot this for like five minutes. Uh, just so you know, not, not like I could give you viewers. Dude! It, it, it doesn't matter, the sentiment is always the best part, so I, I appreciate it. Thank you for the host. Look. I was gonna say as well, I've seen a lot of streamers that um do the, like, Ah, oh, X person is hosting, and it's like, I got one view, and it's like... Having the alert is always a good thing, so... But, nah, yeah, I, I, I just like playing on Twitch for the, um... For the fun chats, because there's always like someone who, who likes to chime in, so that's always good fun. Um, and then, uh, yeah, like I don't really need... I'm not, I'm not doing it for the views, not doing it for the money. Just a place to chill. That's the best part. Uh, and then you get this map. Uh, you can kind of see the, uh, the texture's a little, a little low on that end, but uh, yeah, generally it's alright. Uh, and yeah, that just tells you like which levels have you gotten every uh, star in. Um, so, uh, bro, you're about to make me set up my Switch to play Galaxy. Dude, like, I feel free. Like, one thing I love doing about playing games is, is getting people very interested in the game as well. Um, and Galaxy is, like, a great game. It's, it's got a lot of, like, things you can do. A lot of... Oh, my special... My favorite part about this game is that almost every single person I ask has a different favorite level. I think the the plurality of them will say Space Drunk Galaxy. But it, but 
nowhere near the majority. Like, it's a real good spread of like whether it's gonna be good egg, whether it's gonna be honey hive, because they're early galaxies, or this one, or maybe they like, um, uh, is it beach bowl? Um, maybe they like, uh, Gus Garden. I'm a big fan of, uh, boy base. Yes! But like, everyone has like a favorite level that's like so different, and I love that about this game. Like, and, and it's something that Galaxy 2, what do you, uh, what do you think, move my PS5 to play my Switch, or keep PS5 where it is, and play New Game Plus on Spider-Man? Yeah. You know, okay, real talk, I have never, like, uh, I have not played the Spider-Man game. Yeah. I, unfortunately, do not own a PlayStation console beyond the PlayStation 2. Uh, but, uh, if you want to play Galaxy, like, go ahead, pull out your, your Switch, uh, or if you want, you can play the Switch on handheld, because then you don't have to unplug things. Uh, oh yeah, New Game Plus on S Spider Man. That uh, sounds also good. Um, so, I do say that I have, like, I, I have not played a Sony, uh, or I don't own a Sony console beyond the, uh, the PlayStation 2. But that being said, I've played, uh, seven games by Insomniac. Uh, and uh, each one of them I have really enjoyed. Inspire the Dragon 1 is legit, like, my favorite, like, PS1 game. So, very close, uh, close tie between that and Grand Theft Auto 2, but, which, uh... I love how, like, genre is, like, usually a very, like, polarizing thing. Like, usually, like, someone... I don't know. I know a lot of people who will only play, like, one... Not one, but, like, generally they'll stick within one genre of games. And then, like, before they'll, like, play, like... Another kind of game genre is just like, oh. so uh, maybe not why, but it's just like you know they they really like, for example, like shooters or RTS games, and they just kind of go like, oh, these other games, like I just kind of get into them. I love like jumping around this, by the way. Like if you pull out hard enough, you're just coming from the wrong angle. I guess I I'm not from the wrong angle, so it's not too bad. I love just going around the other side of this as well, and just having like one spider instead. Okay, that's not one. Ah, <laughs> oh, they're everywhere! <laughs> uh, the PS5 is the first PlayStation I've ever owned. I got the Series X before I realized I needed a PS5. Uh, the Series X is still a fine console, and and I actually think like, dude, like having both is a very, um, uh, fun thing because you get to, like, the there seems to be like a good mix of like games that are best on the PS5 and games that are best on the Xbox series. So you get a really like good choice between like having the best version of games. I think I remember um, Borderlands 3 like has a tremendously good PS5 version. Um, the massive Xbox stand. Um, so though, like that, that's quite good system. I'd say like the, the really like good systems if you don't want to invest in gaming PC, GT, plus like, you know, like, shit. <laughs> um, that, I, like, hopefully, I, I remember, like, yeah, getting into, like, PC gaming and stuff, uh, like, 2011. 2011 was, like, the prime of, like, you know, hardware is not too pricey, standards are being reasonably met, um, like, between components, like, you're not witnessing anything too weird. Uh, uh, this is a fun part of the Joy-Con drift, but my, uh, 15-year-old nunchuck is doing fine, so yay. <laughs> uh, every Xbox stand, uh, I mean, I've owned every console except the Xbox One X. Um, oh, like, you've even got, like, uh, like, variations in the 360 and stuff. I really want, like, the, the really fat 360, but I don't think there's a like, real purpose to having it. Like, really, like, any of it works fine. <laughs> Um, I want a fat PS3 though, because I do want to play my PS1 games and sort of HDMI out. That sounds like a really, like, fun thing. <laughs> um... Yeah, it's a shame that they take that hardware out, but you know, it's obviously cost saving measure, and... Uh, the statistics show that every, you know, a lot of... A a and except the 360 versions. Okay, uh, do you have, like, the, the big fat, uh, Xbox 360, that, the one that classically would always get the red rings? I say always, but it's like, really, it's, it's, it's a very, a very noticeable amount of people who get the red rings. Um, ah, the good one. Oh, like the black one that's kind of like an X shape. It's mildly an X. Uh, that's my cursor. There it is. Um, 
I've actually got an original Xbox sitting on my table right now because I've been playing uh, Forza Motorsport. On and off, like, I just can't get into it. And that's not because, like, oh, I love Grand Theft Because I just play Project Ops Racing. I really like that. And, like, I get to Forza and I'm like, man, like, this came out at the end of the, three, of the Xbox, like, generation. Uh, Project Gotham Racing was a launch title. Project Gotham Racing just looks, like, as good, runs at 60 FPS, has, like, a banging soundtrack. It's got 19 2000, that just makes it completely a better game. And then here's Forza. I mean, it's got, it's got the cars. It, it feels kind of weird to me. I don't know, I can't get into it. Um, music is just the part that hits me the worst, though. Like, it's just a real weak, like, original soundtrack. I say that not like hating on Forza all the time, but I found good enjoyment in uh, Horizon 4. I played the, the beginning and the end. Uh, one thing the Xbox has over everyone is the god you can play this from your 2001 on your 2020 console. I really appreciate that, and that's that is because they have put in so much effort in. Uh, I realize as well the, uh, the goal of this level was to come back here and do this uh, fun bit where you. Uh, uh, oh, you, you basically like come. Okay, you're not gonna see this, but there's a, there's a walkway on the right. But I believe. I believe. Okay, I, yeah, I guess you can impale yourself on the on the thing. Is okay. We'll do this legit. Um, but no, yeah, like the Xbox has has made a great amount of effort in like getting. I just realized it's the, it's the box, isn't it? It's the, it's the box. I don't know why I'm blanking out here. Um, but yeah, I have had a tired week. I have, like, helped a friend carry some, like, uh, server cabinets, like, the other day, and then I forgot. Uh, ooh, I need to restart the chat as well, because sometimes the chat uh, absolutely flips out, so I'm gonna try and, like, do both at the same time right now. Uh, you can see the chat's, like, scrolling down the screen. Um, favorite Pokemon, uh, I guarantee, uh, you're gonna clown on me, uh, for my pick. Uh, my favorite Pokemon is, and I feel like you're paying attention to me, but well, that's it. Uh, my favorite Pokemon is, uh, second gen, and the original Game Boy, uh, Smash Game Boy Color versions, because they were rather enhanced by the Game Boy Color. Um, but they, like, that is, uh, you know, the version I added, like, so many, like, great mechanics. Reading is great. I didn't pay attention to it, and that was the part that I was thinking of as well. <laughs> uh, so this one's interesting. It's just like, yeah, you, you um, these you guys are going through for all the fire stuff. The Koopas are a little bit of a weird mechanic. I feel like this is probably one of the oldest things that they thought of, and maybe it's a remnant of a sunshine idea. Um, a Pokemon, I mean, the actual mod. Oh, uh, obviously, it's, it's probably going to be Munchlax, because I got the Munchlax in the bottom of that. Uh, I believe this sprite came from, uh, I got this off Cerebi, they put the sprite, uh, under their Pokemon XD page, and I'm pretty sure this was well before, um, uh, Mario. It was well before Diamond and Pearl. Uh, Charizard? Charizard's great, though. At least it's not, like, Hand Sage. All my homies hate Hand Sage, you know? <laughs> I think Pokemon's in the Oh, did I just double spin that? Oh, Lucario game. Oh, dude, I mean, Fortune has a lot of great ones. Like, that's why I love it. It, it only has like 100, but they are 100 really good ones. Alright, real talk, green lipstick, like, absolutely flip, like, freaks me out. Why do people do that to themselves? The whole point of, like, you know, lipstick is to pronounce your lips. If you think that's an attractive feature of you, go for it. But green? Turtles and green lips. Decidueye? Decidu yeah, Decidueye is actually way, way cool. I, I do like, um, Six Chan. I know, it's a Six Chan. It's a, uh, it's a Seven Chan Decidueye, isn't it? I think it is. Now I'm angry again. And suddenly, it's a cool hell of a thing. Isn't it weird that, like, this is so cool? I was. I was gonna say actually it's like a uh, gimmicky feature, but the shells are the gimmicky feature. I'm trying to get like a straight angle here. There you go. And I didn't get the straight angle. 
because it kind of locked off, but that's okay. Uh, my favorite game is even more controversial. Hey, if you if your favorite game is Sword and Shield, you can. You know, it's okay. um, I'd say there's not really a bad choice. All of them have their strengths. Even first gen. So, uh, uh, unless you're gonna mention like Pokemon Snap as your favorite, in which case, sure. <laughs> Yeah. Snap's not a bad game, it's just uh, would you put it as your favorite? Would you go into a job application and you go, hey, like, what's your favorite Pokemon game? And you just say Snap, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm done with that. Uh, so this is the mechanic for those who haven't, uh, uh, Sword Shield is my least favorite. Why would you think it's my favorite? Uh, it's a so bad it's good territory. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so for those who don't, um, who haven't played this game before, uh, the stars, or the levels that have three stars in them, they'll come back with the Prankster Comets, and the Prankster Comets, what they do is that they'll take a star, and they'll spice it up in some way. Um, this does mean that, uh, that's effectively 15 stars that are just kind of, like, just on almost a repeat of what happened earlier. Minus Pokemon Move. Dude, I, I'd say 7th Gen is a great, like, it's a great game. I love how it is different, and it's paced, like, it's got some really, like, good writing as well. I like it. Just like, just, oh, it makes me interested. There's a lot of characters who have personality, um, which is, is something that, like, is, is a big problem with, uh, um, Sword of Shield, so it's got what, what, like, fun is with the writing. Um, so basically, yeah, the star is, like, do the first star of the game, but in four minutes, and, uh... To a certain uh, Mr. FD, uh, this is uh, reason number two why I find Galaxy 2 to be good because these comments are nowhere near as redundant as play the same level again. I know there's one difference, which is these are chain chomps instead of the weird rock things. That's it. I get it. Chain chomps. Uh, oh, Moon is a great game. Is a great game. I think my only other thing, uh, tutorial for seven uh, is an unbearable though. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe get in the bag like legit, like that lasts for a while. Um, so that that definitely um, is something that I, I feel like can be a lot better. Um, was seven gen the first one that also like? Uh, oh no no no, six gen was one. Like your rival. Uh, technically you had the, uh, the Pokemon that was weak to yours. And so I was like, you had like a much easier time getting through- Oh my gosh! You had a much easier time getting through, like, parts. Die! Um... But I, uh, my, mine's second gen, and that's just because I'm old. Like, as I mentioned, I played first gen before second gen was out. Um, like, legit, like, it took me by storm. Uh, I think that's just because as well, like, my mom was, uh, she got me a Game Boy before, like, really getting me into it, like, a big console. The Game Boy, like, uh, was a really cheap handheld. It's, like, and not that it's a bad build, but that, like, legit, like, like, it was such an antiquated, like, chip on it. And yet, yet they committed so hard with it. And, and it lasted, like, it lasted so long, like, they never replaced it until the, it was made to be cheap. Oh, exactly, like, it wasn't made to, to survive bomb blast, apparently. Um, like, that, it's a brilliant strat, and I'm actually glad Nintendo has kind of gone back to that style of, making a cheaper console and really dishing out with just good software. Uh, play Crystal on Virtual Console and 4, I would hate it because of how old it is. I love it the whole way through except for buying 10x attacks for Whitney. Yeah, it, Crystal, second gen, gets brutal. It really, like, it doesn't give you that many trainers to, to prepare for a, a time of life I kept going, which is good fun. Um, it doesn't give you that much, uh, uh, that much room to train and really get your party up to the speed for the next gym, and especially as well, they specifically chose eight types that were not the eight types used in the gyms in the first game. Um, so, like, 
So, like, yeah, you, know, like, you get to do a normal type gym, a bug type gym fight, like, not too bad. And then it's like, you gotta do ice, you gotta do steel, you gotta do dragon. It's like, they really rip on you at the end of the game. They really get you. Um, Oras is great, though. Oras is great. And, and as someone who, like, had a lot of friends who didn't get into Pokemon until third gen, it's like... Coming back to Oras is like, it's, it was the best thing for me. In the same way that Heart Gold is definitely like, you know, such a love letter for me. Um, they really uh, make it that much cheaper. They tend to make a large profit on, uh, large margin on, profit margin on consoles. Unlike the Sony or Microsoft. Yeah, that is that is one thing with, with um, Sony or Microsoft is that they sell these consoles for. By the way, I think these comments, uh, like, the pattern is just. It's regular. I think they just dart between various levels because I always need to play these levels in the same order, and I'll always be doing a speedy comment in Space Junk at this time. Uh, the comments either you can get them or three stars that you do otherwise, or three attempts at a comment, uh, it just moves on to another level. Um, but I believe there will always be a comment. Uh, oh, I don't know if there's always a comment. I think if you've got every other star, there's always a comment that you have to get. So. And yeah, I know, you're seeing the same level over and over again. This is why I get to re-chat. <laughs> Imagine it sucked out of space like this. Um, yeah, uh, it's really interesting that, yeah, like, the, um, like, modern consoles, um, are rather expensive to make, and, I mean, Obviously, they're trying to push, like, stuff, but yeah, Nintendo's done, like, a decent job of just having, like, an upsell on basically having, like, the last-gen hardware. Um, I think only the N64 and, uh, the like that. Like, the GameCube wasn't particularly the strongest, like, performing system at the time. It came out a little late, uh, rather similar to the PS2 at the time. Uh, the Wii, of course, was just a very high clocking GameCube. Um, was it actually, or was it like its own thing? I'm pretty sure it actually was like the GameCube. Uh, the Wii U was basically a PS3. I am amazed that, uh, I would love, by the way, if someone could figure out how to get like PS3 uh, software running on a Wii U. Or is it actually like, it's because the, um, not because it's, pa I guess it's because it's power PC, but the, the cell architecture is probably what makes it incredibly iffy to emulate. Um, if Exos plays their cards right, this next generation, they could open protect Sony. Um, it, it's interesting as well because the 360 generation just barely lost out in the end in total sales to the PS3. Um, but like it, that that PS3 launch until the slim console came around and the discounts came along, it was struggling so hard. Um, and that's that is given the red rings. That was just because a lot of the market, like either you wanted to get an Xbox or uh, the Wii looks pretty good. <laughs> so uh, I definitely think the Xbox has the right like cards on the table right now. They're focusing really hard on backwards compatibility. Uh, they are not uh, shutting down studios. I see a lot of people in the time I'm talking about the uh, last of us getting remastered yet again. It looks like, wow, I'm not sure. I don't have a lot of us, it's just that both games are on the PS4 and ideally PS4 games should just like, just update them like you guys. But, like, you really have to pay for another remaster. And don't say game company is going to game company, because that's 100%. <laughs> uh, if the 360 didn't focus on the Kinect so much, uh, at the end they would have won. Uh, ironically, I think the move was a decent sell for the PS3. And honestly, the Kinect wasn't too bad as well. A, a fair number of people did. Like, the Kinect sold, like, a, a couple million units, didn't it? Which, given... Not a couple million, actually. It would have been, like, maybe a couple tens of million. A lot of people bought those. It's crazy. It's like, I think it's really expensive and just spies on you. What are you guys doing? You're just buying this, like, 10 camera setup. Uh, do I go back for that? I will go back for that. Enemy base spotted. So I actually have enough, uh, enough stars to take on the, uh, the next, uh, boss as well. 
Uh, can you turn the game volume down a bit? Some of the levels are blast my ears. Oh, 100%, sorry. There we go, I'll turn it down a little bit more. Um, uh, yeah, I, I feel like the, um... I don't think the Kinect was a, was a bad decision in terms of sales. It definitely was a, uh... Tacky, just, we're following Nintendo because Nintendo did the thing really well. Kind of thing. Um, that's not to say Nintendo does things really well. Like, everything from the early 2010s onwards was a bit of a joke. Uh, I love you, Nintendo, but like, uh, check if you have time in a bit. Check 86th place. Uh, 86th place. Uh, oh, do you do speedruns of this? Check this. Honey Hive Cosmic Mario Race. 86th place is. Hey, that name looks familiar. 4 hours 34. That is really good. Uh, this is the any percent though, so uh, you've you picked the uh, the six stars that make the most sense. Uh, or the 60 stars that make the most sense. Um, yeah, no, I, I actually, I do. Yeah. Uh, even today is, yeah, exactly. Uh, so this is a Shadow Mario race, you just want to, like, not touch Shadow Mario. Uh, and then you want to beat into the goal. Uh, I'm going to do this exact same cut that I did last time, which saves me a bunch of time. Uh, uh, I hate this jump, but <laughs> it works. Uh, managed to not get dead last, uh, even though it's not impressive. Dude, I mean, there's always, uh, like... You'd be amazed how how good you get at the games that you really like. Like um, I mentioned, um, maybe in a lot last one, I like I played Toy Story 2, uh, which is a game that ugh, I I remember I you know, it took a while to, to play my first time, and then like now I beat it in like under two hours. Um, Half Life One I can beat in uh, under two hours. Uh, Mario 64 I can beat in under half an hour. Uh, Quake I can beat in like. How long did I take on that one? 45 minutes? Like, yeah. once you really get a hang of the game, you don't even need to know, like, that many strats, but just, there's a lot of, like, you know, just, like, you can just breeze through it. And even right now, I've only been playing for just shy of an hour and a half now on this stream. Uh, and I've got a fair number of the, the stars. Uh, I'm not exactly being the fastest one, but, uh, I'm gonna be playing, uh, Zack Snyder's just or watching Zack Snyder's Justice League today to see what the buzz is about. I... I will warn you, it is four hours. I have not watched it, I've also not watched the original. Um, not, I haven't been the biggest uh, person following superhero movies, but uh, it is four hours. It's long, it's longer than Titanic. You gotta, you gotta like, take your time if, if you're gonna watch that. Um, so, connect with say the art tracking? Definitely, I think, like, what the Connect did, uh, I never watched a DC movie ever, so hopefully it's good. I hear it's better. Uh, although I hear the Wonder Woman films are alright. Both of them, actually. I think the smaller scale a superhero film gets, generally the tighter it actually gets. I love these ones that have too many characters. I feel like, yeah, they spread themselves out too, too much. There's too many people to follow. Um, so I have the uh, the opinion that would get me stabbed, which is uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the Avengers. And I say this with X Men Two being a film I actually do really like, and I have fallen. Uh, I might just watch part one and two today of Justice League, and three and four tomorrow. Oh, is it split up into various parts? Oh, is it like a is it like a presented as like a four part mini series? Oh, that's interesting because it's on a it's on a streaming platform. Um, so here's the interesting part. You got the Luma here, and the Luma leads to a secret star. Um, the two secret stars, by the way, on the other levels, I, you can't get right now, so don't worry. Um, but if I can find 50 star bits before I have to blast off this planet, then I will, um, then I'll be able to get that, and I would actually rather get that right now. I, I mean, I guess I could just come back for it as well. Uh, and here's a trick that people don't know, uh, if you spin the enemies and then you get them, uh, you will, uh, get star bits when they meet their untimely demise. If you jump on them, they'll drop a coin instead. Uh, and because the coin's for health, it's always a nice thing to have. Uh, what's up, Bretzo? How's it going? Uh, 
really like all the Avengers. Yeah, I mean, I definitely hear that they are the better films of the, um, of all the Marvel Cinematic movies, so... Uh, I hear Age of Ultron has its lower points, but then, like, uh, Infinity War Endgame just offsets it by, like, a ton. Uh... I'm not lost, I'm wandering around looking for more stuff. I think I actually might be able to get 50, except I'm at 49. Oh, we got another one, it's gonna, okay, it's fine, it's all good, it's all good. Uh, Endgame is definitely one of the best movies ever made. Um, yeah, I, no, I hear a lot of people really enjoyed it, so. Uh, if I had to say a superhero movie I really like, uh, definitely X-Men 2 is up there. I have uh, Spider-Man 2 also up there. Did they come out? I think Spider-Man 2 came out like 2004, didn't it? So it's like one off. Alright, let's get this guy. You're gonna see my crosshair just go panic the heck, but... 50 star bits, away we go. Uh, and, yeah, just just back to the Kinect topic. Um, yeah, the, uh, the Kinect, um... Like, that technology is really good, and I'm I'm really glad of, like, these slightly bizarre, like, consumer products that, like, absolutely, um, you know, like, people create some very neat software with this. I thought there was a, um, there was a star on this island. You, uh, you can't spin all the time, by the way. You gotta wait for the star to, like, you again. Uh, oh, I guess you could also jump on this guy's because the one's dropping or anything. Uh, this is your one bit of Yoshi in the game, so, uh, enjoy it. Uh, 11 years of storytelling, starting with Iron Man and ending with Iron Man. Um, oh yeah, definitely. I, I think it's very, uh, bittersweet, the bookmarking that I hear on that one. Um, I have watched, I, I've watched every, uh, Marvel film up to The Avengers. Uh, and I really did enjoy the Iron uh, Man films. I thought they were they were really good. Um, a lot of character in them, which I thought was great. Um, like you don't want a superhero film that's just like we're superheroes and here's bad guy and we're creating that comic book aesthetic. Like Iron Man was distinct, the the film at least. It was very distinctly like not that much of a comic book like feel movie to it, it was basically, even if it still kind of had that structure to it, I, I, I liked how it just kind of felt like this was a, like, an action film. I, I think that's something that's, like, amazingly good. It's like, this is action film. I also think it's very surprising that the, the director, uh, had that one, uh, those, like, seven episodes on Friends where he, uh, they did Monica. And then just suddenly now he directed Iron Man and made a bajillion dollars. And then he directed, uh, which one was the one? I know he did The Lion King, but he did another one. The, the, the newer one, by the way. Marvel took a big risk killing off three of the uh, best Avengers uh, spoilers for people who haven't watched um, Endgame, but uh, pay it off. I, I'm going to assume the actors just were like, yeah, no, nah, like, this is, it's fine. Um, and... They've done a good job at introducing new characters, because I, there's so many characters in that universe that they can just go, yeah, like, we can, we can start afresh, um, it's gonna be very interesting because they can't really bring back characters, um, I don't think that's gonna be the easiest way to bring back a character, especially because they're gonna be old, uh, if they were to come back, um, Best you can get is maybe like cameo jobs, but like, you know, so for reference, if you feed a hungry Luma, he'll always be fed, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, if there's any Avenger they need to keep, it's definitely Thor. Dude, he, I hear he had like a, a, a kind of like a second coming where like, you know, here's Thor, he's big burly action hero, Asgardian guy. Uh, Thor the Dark World I hear is like the most like bizarre, like, a, I guess Marvel movie, and then they decided to make him funny. They they had they hired this burly guy, and then they didn't realize he could tell jokes really well, so they went with it. I think, but apparently it's paid off. They got Ragnarok. They're doing another comedy-based one. He gets to be fat and plays Fortnite. Help! I'm stuck. Aim your thing at me and press A to pull me out. Got gotcha. ya. <laughs> 
<laughs> that toad is gone. He's dead, bro. Is this supposed to be the Pikmin ship? Is that is that the reference that everyone keeps saying every single time they play this level? Uh, here's a power up that uh feels like a little bit of cheating at times. Uh, you get uh, three extra hit points. I believe you can't use coins to recover the three extra hit points. But it's nice to have. Uh, this is a weird mechanic. It's kind of like the, the sling size. It comes up a fair bit, this, this uh, weird mechanic. And uh, yeah, you can like push them around. This reminds me so much of like World of Goo. You know, like that weird like extra physics. Put Chris Hemsworth and the Fat Super Avengers that game. One of the most muscly Avengers. Oh, exactly. You know what I hate as well? Like, I know, uh, I know Warner Brothers want to do the, uh, the DC, like, you know, team gang thing, so they got the Justice League, which I know is... Oh, do you have to get, like, one of the, like, one of the players before you can get the back? Or do I just hit it in a very weird way? Yeah, I must have just hit it in a weird way. Alright, so the, the gimmick with this guy is that you gotta break all the spots on the battle. Uh, it gives you so much time to go ahead and do that. Ah! But now I'm angry again, every single time. Uh, now he sprays poop, which makes this a little harder to follow, but I've got the extra health. What are you doing there? Just get off! Ah, oh, Toad! The humanity. The fungianity. Eh. 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 I think I remember Giant Bomb having trouble on this boss when it first came out. Uh, come on, Trevor Mario Galaxy. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Can I just sing this? Oh my gosh, you see this. You can! What the heck? I didn't know that Toad could be used to just get yourself a free hit. Nice and easy, no pain, no gain, nothing to be gained. It's just a spider. Uh, I think you actually have to fling yourself at him, but I love the like spider web just getting sucked off into the back. Even if it is just like really simple like physics, it's like whatever. Like this game is, it is 2007, but it's 2007 like at its like finest polish. It is so tight. Actually, I remember everyone gave uh, Portal Game of the Year in 2007. Honestly, this game has aged fairly better than Portal. I'm not saying Portal's a bad game, but uh, Portal has aged, and it's surpassed by a remarkably good but more drawn-out sequel. That's my only issue with Portal 2, is that, like, it's four portals. It's four of the same game. Uh, so I believe you need 600 now, and I don't have that much, so... Uh, fortunately, they just sit out here, so... Yeah, it's, oh, it's another 400, okay. Yeah, unfortunately I still don't have that. <laughs> uh, Bowser's Furry was amazing. I know it's Fury. I keep saying Furry. Uh, yeah, I hear, I hear Bowser's Fury was like, really like, well done. Um, like, side campaign. I actually really want to get it. I really enjoy 3D World, so maybe it gives me a cheap opportunity to... Well, maybe not cheap, but it gives me an opportunity to play the game again with a nice little bonus, like, 3 hour thing. Rolling in the clouds. Alright, they got this one guy here. I remember this. They got this one character here. Who's the billboard. Two words. So I just want to jump on this and go away. But no. Uh, if you think about rolling out, you got this an old billboard here. You jump to get on top of the ball. And you got to point the weird remote up. You gotta point it up, and you gotta do this kind of gimmicky controller thing, and then, uh, yeah, you just tilt it in a direction, that's how you go. You get a new Pokemon Snap this month? Uh, no, I generally kind of wait on new games a bit, I just want to, like, hear the word, maybe the different price a little bit, um, because I got a lot of things I gotta play, and, uh, a fair number of older games as well, so I just, I just play, like, a bunch of other stuff, but, like, I'm working through games on my Steam library and stuff, uh, or I'm just picking them up in like discounts. Um, so like I, I, I've been working my way through like the F1 games and then it's like well, F1 2020, which is the newest game and is in the humble choice. 
Uh, you could be the kind of guy who, like, does this and then, like, points at the screen to, like, get them. Briefly. <laughs> I'm glad that that was where I died, and not not me pointing at the screen. <laughs> uh, ooh, good amount of every Switch game this year. Oh, that's good. Legit, there's a lot of exciting titles coming out. I, I will still say, to every Switch owner, if you do not have it, please pick up Dragon Quest XI. You will somehow enjoy a JRPG even though you never enjoy JRPGs. Every single person, all two of them that I know of, that have played Dragon Quest XI have loved it. Uh, do you want USA currency amount or Australian? Um, oh, you don't have to tell me how much money you got. That's fine. Um, but, uh, not yet, I liked it. It's definitely like, how many how many games are you intending to pick up this year for the Switch? Because yeah, I, I, I know I have a few that I probably want to pick up, but uh, I don't know if I've necessarily got uh, like more than like six off the top of my head. Um, this level's not really too much, it's just kind of wheels around and then hit the end and the star pops out. For a bit. Disappears and then it comes back for a brief moment. Uh, and then we climb up the flagpole, which I'm glad they brought back the flagpole. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm intrigued by the Pokemon Snap game. I may pick it up later on, but just, yeah, not, not, not in this month. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um. So, but yeah, no, I, like, I really enjoy, uh, uh, Mario Golf. Dude, okay, real talk, I really want to get Mario Golf. I need me a good golf game. Mario Golf seems like it's exactly what I want. Uh, the Gen 4 remakes, I think I probably will be playing those, yeah. Uh, both versions, so good on you there. And, and a Switch Pro. The Switch Pro, like, that's a thing. Oh, and Skyward Sword as well. Sorry, I glanced past that. Um, I think I'm good on Skyward Sword. I would prefer playing on the original hardware for the moment, unless there is, like, unless there is a remarkably, like, good improvement. Um, the, the motion-free, uh, gameplay mode may be the, the thing that I need. Um, I think I need Star Bits. I think I need Star Bits on this level. So... I'm going off memory, I, I, I can't remember. Uh, coins? Who uses those? Uh, so, Battle Rock Galaxy, I still know people. I know, this is the fourth of the fifteen, like, three-star levels. And I still know people who are just like, yeah, no, this is my favorite. This level's like full of so many cool things. Like, it's crazy. Um... Yeah, the Switch Pro, um, like, it makes sense that Nintendo's making it, but are they making it? Like, everyone keeps talking about how there's going to be a Switch Pro, and it's very likely Nintendo's, like, considering it. Oh, it's not this level, it's another one. Okay, I'll sing this one. Uh, everyone... Okay. Uh, never played Scarlet Sword, so the Switch Remaster will probably be the best way to play it. Yeah, like, if you don't have an old Wii, probably will be. Um, I, I am currently playing with the Skyward Sword Gold Wii Remote. I love this thing. It matches my Gold Knight controller, which has a... It's not a black cable? I think it does, so it's not a... It's not gold the whole way, but it's a great feeling. I do not have a Gold Nunchuck. I feel like I probably, uh need like an extra nunchuck because uh, my two nunchucks are rather battle hardened from the uh, 10 year old me. Uh, I have not like oh good. Um, it being in HD is also nice to have. Like uh, Wind Waker HD is uh, I'd probably say the best way to play the game minus the fact that the visuals are uh, a little um, not as what they were originally intended to be or maybe they always were intended to be that. That's a fun thing about remakes and remasters. Sometimes it actually is the director's intention and people just don't like the change. What's like a classic one? Blade Runner? Oh, well, as long as I'm not dead, I'm doing okay. I love this ending, by the way. It's like you get to the end here. You got these cool ones where it's just like chilling. 
and that coin is going nowhere. You got these star bits, but the most important part is that you gotta attract all of these bullet bills. Uh, don't, dang it. Okay, well, coins for me. Imagine Prime Trilogy, I'll be playing one and two with my GameCube controller. If it, if it does have GameCube controller out of the box, that would be amazingly good stuff. Uh, I, I just feel like it's because the games are designed with uh, having um, at least, like, you know, your face buttons and your stick, and then two directional things at the bottom. The way that, like, it, you can just freely just go between uh, visors and beams, it's so fluid. It's such a great, like, well-designed um, game. I love it. Um, yeah, whereas, like, the Wii version, you hold down minus and then you point to a screen, and, or point to a part of the screen, or a plus and you point to a part of the screen. And, like, you're adding time, you are preventing me from turning, um, which I guess in the heat of combat you're locked on. It's probably the best way to do it on the Wii, but it's, uh, not the easiest way to, to translate it. It's not the smoothest way, so if you got the face buttons, I wish I had fast control support, because that would just make a lot of sense. That would make a lot of sense. Um, I'm surprised Galaxy 2 was never as DLC for 3D all size. I lost a bet because I thought it was going to appear in January. <laughs> um, it makes sense, I guess, like why they didn't expand on something that they wanted as like a limited edition collector's item, but I also kind of hate the idea of the limited edition collector's item on that. You guys know you sold like how many? Like 8 million copies? You're not going to be hard pressed to find one. It's cool. Is that gonna hit it? I don't think it's gonna hit it. Uh, that's kind of unfortunate. Um, so these are not for bombs. They are just regular bombs. You can tell because they are not for bombs. Um, but yeah, no, I, like, I'm surprised Galaxy 2 was not added to their list. Well, not a game that they considered porting. Or at least, maybe not considered, but they ended up porting. It's on the Wii U, so whatever they, you know, they want to do involving marketing and selling a game, uh, you can easily get a copy from GameStop uh, that will last like a week till stock is gone. Um, yeah, exactly. Like a lot, of, a lot of these old uh, stores, uh, you know, as much as I'll rip on EB Games, they got um, they got stock for, for things that you're like, oh, cool. Um, I will still, I will still yell at my local EB Games. Well, not my local, but I'll still yell at the fact that EB Games does not ship anything from anywhere. They really need to send their pre-ordered games, or at least, like, let me pay for shipping for pre-ordered games. You have so many plastic guitars out there. Uh, does this guy require 50 or 60? Because you get to break the start, uh, the chain chomps. 30. Do you actually break the change? I'm pretty sure you break it. Cap Louie! Uh, this is a bonus I know, like, or a bonus star that I know a lot of people uh, like. Oh, this is the first time that I hate the game, but it's uh. I think this is the easier of the two, the two variants of this. This is the ammo depot, not the garbage dump. I love these like gear characters. They're really cute. I like them. I want one. Uh, so the trick with this is that you gotta throw the bombs or the bombs such that they land kind of where all those uh, little coin markers are. Uh, they fortunately will stop exactly where you're about to like drop them. Uh, or where they, where they like, you know, where they land after the arc. Uh, and generally you'll see that the, the way they land is pretty okay. I think they take like six seconds to blow up, so this is my last shot. No, they take longer to blow up. No, you gotta do it faster. At least they don't kill you this time. Mario Sunshine would legit like kill you if you lost a race. You'd, you'd lose the race and then like bam, 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 and you'd be dead. All right, so uh, once more with feeling. It's been a while, and I'm also tired. Uh, 
Doing four blasts if you're really skilled. Well, second time's a charm. Who knew that bombs work so well as an industrial strength cleaner? <laughs> There's that lying around. Here we go. Wow. So, uh. Now, I remember when this game came out and, like, you'd have all those, like, fun articles on, like, why Mario Galaxy is not a. Technically feasible. Mario is out in space without a helmet. It's like, oh, okay. It's like, this this object is pulling gravity down, but its center of mass is off to the side. Uh, here's another fun one. Uh, this is obviously the observatory. You get to see a bunch of galaxies, but does this imply that these galaxies are orbiting around the spaceship? Doing something, I don't know what's going on there. Um, so this is the Hurry Scurry Galaxy. I'm gonna see if I can try and do two more. This and the, uh, the Hungry Loomer outside. The Shrinking Satellite. Uh, th this is one that people who play Galaxy 2 are just like, yeah, okay, thanks guys. Really original. Uh, fortunately it's one of these, uh, more gimmicky galaxies. Very short and sweet. Nice and good. Uh, basically all you gotta do is learn the fact that these platforms shrink when you step on them. Uh, and then uh, these music notes, you gotta pick up all the music notes and something good will happen. We'll see how we go. I hate how they put two there, like what is that? What have they done? And they like, oh, I... I'll just blame the fact that I'm tired. Lives in this game, oh jeez. And, and I think this is a game that people. <laughs> Thank you. I think this is a game. Well, they put a life there, so it's not really the worst. Mario breaks his neck. Um, they put, they put a one up there. I don't know what's going on there. But yeah, like, what is happening here where they put like two like notes there? I don't know what's going on. Alright, but, I mean, fortunately, like, there's enough platform that you don't have to worry really too much here. Is this a time base as well? Like, I feel like you're gonna die anyways. Uh, somehow that star was the source of the black hole, and the music is what made it. Oh, I should've done the spin. I should there it is. Woo! Woo! You always have to do this whenever you do the star. You always have to just hold up. And just just fly it around. It's good fun. So that's that is a star. Galaxy complete high score. That's the good stuff. Uh, did I just get Mario to like turn towards the camera briefly? <laughs> Deadpan stare us, being like, "Oh, you want to want to get one more star?" Terrible Charles Martinet impression. I'm sorry. I'm Fanish. I need 400 star bits, or else I'm gonna just absolutely collapse and die right here. Oh, now I'm literally about to break at the seams. Wow, Gluttony is such a such a fun thing. Uh, that's no, okay, Emerald. It's all good. Uh, I will have to warn you that this is going to be the last star that I'm going to get on the stream. But, I do all my streams at the same time every week, unless the NBN is down. In which case, I try my best. <laughs> uh, this is a very sticky situation. Uh, this is a fun star. I'm going to say it's going to be very fun given the way that you can see my cursor just not necessarily doing full rotation. This is the star, by the way, because you can just, like... You can pick all these like star bits everywhere, and then just like jump anywhere. You can kill yourself. There's a life as well, but uh, it's reasonably straightforward. It's just uh, it's uh, perilous. Like yeah, you get all these star bits. Here. It's 
very in the morning for me, so depending on when I wake up, I don't see any stream. Uh, no, the good news is that I stream at this time every week. So if you're up for now, uh, oh, like, oh, I guess. If you're, if you're up now, then you're up for a stream. If you're not up for a stream, uh, all of my streams end up on YouTube. Uh, I try to do it within a day. Uh, I, I'm not a Twitch affiliate, so I, it's not like there's a restriction on me being able to get the streams put on YouTube in a day, but, uh, um, do I go for the one up there? Also, I love the other fire bars are in this game. And yeah, there's a lot of star bits in this level, like, legit, like, I just picked up 97, I'm not even, like, trying to go for it. Did you raid another galaxy streamer? Who is another galaxy streamer? Uh, that is currently streaming. I'll give it a check at the end. Uh, now this is the fun part, like, trying to figure out, like, your timing here. Just kidding, it's really easy. <laughs> uh, I'll find one for you, okay. I'll give it a glance as well. Uh, twitch.tv... Not slash me now. Oh, wow. Oh, wait, wait for me out here, because I'm on the... <laughs> Sorry, I did the Hungry Lumber thing. Uh, this is gonna... That's gonna play other people's audio. Let's, uh, let's not. I don't want ESL Australia telling me, uh, anything, so let's, uh, let's mute that for the moment. Whoops. Sorry about that. Uh... Super Mario Galaxy. Uh, let's see, we got a we got a guy. Uh, nice girl update. I probably say the uh, the biggest person streaming right now. I'm the third apparently because there's not too many people playing Mario Galaxy. I really like that about Twitch. I love how like people are like you know I want to watch someone play a game, and it's really easy to find like someone that you enjoy because there's only seven there's only eight people currently streaming the game, and. Uh, yeah, like, you can easily just kind of jump and find which one that you enjoy the most. Uh, so, I feel like uh, this guy, um, uh, the... Ooh, the platform... What's that? The platform at AU? Okay, let's let's give him a rate. How do you do this? I gotta go to the Twitch dash dashboard, first of all. Uh, how do we... Hold on, how do we actually do raids? <laughs> I've never done this before. Uh, let me just cut the intermission. Uh, here we go. And then I'll, I'll end the stream in a moment. But yeah, how do we, how do we actually do raids? Create a dashboard? I think that's where it's at. Stream manager. Uh, raid channel. There we go. Alright. So, we do... Uh... Platform AU. What a lucky guy, he gets the raid. There we go. Okay, guys, with that, thank you guys very much for watching the, the stream. Uh, be ready to, to raid when the stream is done. I think I just pressed the button and you guys just immediately go over to him. So in that case, that'll be all good. Um, thank you guys very much for the, the chat, for just being being a part of just, you know, my life and just chatting and yeah, no, it's great chill times. I, like, I, I'm so thankful that I get to, you know, hang out with so many nice people. So that's always good. Uh, as I said earlier, Twitch Bot's just going to be on YouTube really soon later, so don't worry about that if you did miss part of it and you want to see the whole thing. Uh, or if you are a person who just goes and watches on YouTube, I appreciate it. Uh, I don't really have too many thoughts. I had, I give myself a minute here to, like, say things, and then it's like, eh, it's just pretty, pretty, pretty much done with everything, so... Have a good uh, week, everyone. If you're down south in Australia, be aware of the cold. If you're anywhere else, it's probably going to get warm, which is nice and good. So take care, everyone. Exciting times ahead. And we'll enjoy the raid. <laughs>